Hey, how you doing, Mr. Jeff? All this well, sir. Welcome to the show. Well, I was just calling to see if maybe you could give me some advice. Okay. Uh, about my working situation. I've been uh, basically chased off my jobs for the past several years. Why? Well, different reasons. Sometimes people, sometimes people have uh, reported false reports to my manager, and end up getting. Well, usually, what they what, what what happens is they'll 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 submit a false report against me, or an over exaggerated report that's not that's not actually true. As you know, I might have done something tiny, but then they over exaggerate it. And then they'll keep pushing my manager over and over and over, and I keep having to go to the office over and over. And eventually, I just quit because the work environment is hostile. People, ha- these, some of these people hate me for no really. I know why they hate me, but why do they you hate know, you? I think it's because I'm a Christian. I think it's because I'm a Christian, and they hate it. And it just depends. Sometimes it's different people. One job, it was this. Okay, so just for example, I had a lady who was not really my manager she wasn't in charge of me but she had uh seniority in the in the job and so she was basically trying to demand that i submit myself to her and and obey her but i i was suspicious of her and and i resented her for that but i was polite and she started doing messed up stuff and started you know basically lying on me and reporting me and and working against me until i finally ended up having to quit the job and that's just one example well, now I try to get jobs. I put in applications, and I don't have a work history because for the past three or four years, I get chased off every job I've had. How old are you, Jay? 30. And are you white? Yes. Are these black people that running you away from your jobs? Not always. At one job, it was black people, and they hated me because I was white, I think. I don't know. It could have been because I was a Christian there, too. But then there was another job where I worked with a bunch of upper upper middle class or upper hold, class white people and hold, they did the same thing to me hold on jay let me take a quick break hold on i gotta take a quick break at the bottom of the hour already back in a moment jay what is it that you're saying or doing on your job that indicates that you are a christian that you have been doing uh well i don't know sometimes Sometimes I don't say anything about it. Sometimes because I've said stuff about it before, and and the situation kind of turns out bad. And then so I would get another job, and I and then I would think, well, I'm not going to say anything about it this time because I just want to see what happens. And I can still feel. It's it, honestly, I could be wrong, man. I don't know, but I think it's because I'm a Christian because people will, will come against me, and it feels like a demonic attack. I don't know though. What are you saying or doing on your jobs that will make them want to come against you like that? Mr. Jesse, I don't know. Sometimes I don't even, most of the time I just completely try to stay by myself. I try to stay away. I mean, I'll be friendly and polite, you know, and and help people if they ask. But usually I try to stay to myself and, and it seems like they'll come after me. You know, I mean, I don't think I say or do anything. I'm trying to think. Are you preaching to the people on the job? No, not not necessarily. Are you preaching to the people on the job? Mm. No, not not really. Are you preaching maybe, maybe to the people? Think- Are you preaching to the people on the job? Uh, well, what would you consider preaching? Are you preaching to the people on the job as a Christian when you're at work? Are you preaching to the people, meaning quote scriptures and talking about Bible verses and speaking that uh, Bible thumper language? No, I don't think so. I mean, there what do you mean you don't think so? You know if you are or not. Well, there's sometimes I have to witness to some people, but for why? The most part, why no. do you have to witness to them? Because some people, it's t- it's appointed sometimes. It's never appointed for you to witness like that at work. You don't well, not, you don't go to work to witness to people by quoting Bible verses all day. 
Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quote, quoting Bible verses all day. I usually keep it very private. Well, how do you win it to people? Because it's appointed. What do you mean by that? Well, okay. So, for example, there was this one time I was working at this place and I was riding with this dude because I was part of the job. We had to ride around in the truck, and I just wanted to share with him about prayer and the power of prayer and about healing. And then it turns out that this guy's wife, I think, was on dialysis or something. She had some kind of, I think, liver problems or kidney problems or something like that. And so it turned out that that, you know, I was what I was sharing with him, he was meant to hear because his wife needed it. But that, but I'm not in the middle of the store preaching to everybody about the Bible. Did he first. ask? Did he ask you to do that? Did he ask for help? Hmm. Maybe not, but I don't think he, he wasn't. Did he involved. ask for help or not? I don't think so. Did he ask for help or not? No. Okay. You can't impose that upon people. And, and one of the problems that the Bible thumpers do, they go to work and they quote scripture to everybody. They're not living it. They are not a living example. And they have been deceived in believing that, oh, there's come a time where it's appointed. And they're getting themselves in trouble at work because your boss didn't hire you to come and quote the Bible to the people. People don't want to hear it. That's why you become a living example, and God will show you when to, when to point the way and when, you know, you'll see when to do it. And when you don't see not to do it, you don't do it, but you're not at work for that. And that's why you're thinking that you're losing these jobs because you're a Christian. You're losing them because you're out of, you have not been born again of God and you become a Bible thumper and you're out of order. Mr. Jesse, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Okay. What do I do in this scenario when I'm not witnessing to people and people still hate me? and try to get me fired until, until the point where I quit the job. And so, so when you're not quoted cool by me, you're just sitting around doing your work, and they hate you for no reason? Yes. And what are you doing that would get their attention? I don't, I don't know. You don't seem to know much about yourself. You need to pay attention and see what you're doing. You do know what you're doing. Are you, are you reading the Bible at work? It's something you're doing that is drawing the attention to you, but you won't see that, and that's why you're not overcoming it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep that in, in consideration, I guess, for now. So if you're not doing anything wrong and you end up, these people hate you, and then you end up quitting. Why do you quit if you're not doing anything wrong? Because it, cause, cause it turns into harassment. They start reporting me. I'm always getting, having somebody talking to me about something. Okay, so and when they man, report you, here you are sitting around doing nothing wrong, and they hate you anyway, and they start reporting you. What do they say in the report? It, it, it could be really about anything. Little what do? Things. Give me an example of what they say in the report. Okay, so in a report, they might say, for example. Not might say. What do they say? Uh, that a paper that I gave out wasn't enough for what I should have given out, but it was. What it wasn't even my paper. What type of paper? Uh, a paper explaining a, um, a, a trip. This is concerning your work? Yes. And so is it your boss that, uh, I mean, is a co-worker reporting you to another bo to a boss? No, it was, it, yeah, kind of, kind of, really. Is it a co-worker that you work with reporting you to your boss? Yes, that's happened. And is it true that the paper is not filled out the way it should be? Not, not to the extent where it should be reported. But it is true that it's not been filled out. No, not really. No, sir. And so you no. fill in the pa you completed the paper as it should be, right? For the most part, yes. Are you but completing the, the paper the way you should? Yes or no? So for that example, 
that paper that they got was enough. They but they complained about it because they were supposed to get two papers. And but so why the do reason you... that they the reason they complained is because they thought they were my papers. They didn't know that those papers were from a different person and that that was the papers they were supposed to get. And did you say but that to thought, your boss? <clears throat> I told him. I said that's that's the papers that so and so gave to me. And so and then it was gone. Then the problem was over once they realized that they weren't my papers. Right. So I don't understand if you are right, why are you quitting? Real men don't quit when they're right. Well, because because usually what ends up happening is the manager is tired of seeing me because it's tired of the reports, tired of this. Then I go to the to the work environment and I got people that just hate me and it's it's very hostile. How do you know they hate you? Uh, they hate you. Because sometimes you can feel it in the air. But how do you know you don't? You, that doesn't make sense. Sometimes you can feel it coming. So, so you can feel your coworkers hating you. I could feel fear hitting me, and then, and then, and then I know, or maybe not. Yeah, yeah, I could feel fear. I could feel a sense of dread. Is it possible it that is you hating them, and you think that they're hating you? Because you do think you're better as a Christian, right? Sir? You do think you're better than they are because you're a Christian, right? Well, no, not, I mean, not really. Yeah, I, I guess. So is it possible that you're judging them because you think you're better because you're a Christian and they're not judging you, but Satan is telling you that they're judging you? Is you judging them? You might be right. You might Am be I right? right about that. Am I right about that? But see, here's the thing, though. Am I right about that it's, first? And I will we'll do here's the thing. You might be. I don't know. But but you don't know that they hate you. You just feel that they hate you, and you think you are, you think you're better because you're a Christian. It's it's the same way the blacks feel about the whites. They think the whites are judging them when it's really the blacks judging the whites. And so, as a Christian, you are judging them, thinking that they are judging you. And you're not any better than they are. Just because you're a Christian, that doesn't make you better. Yeah, but then it happens, and I don't actually, I don't actually speak or do evil to them. They do it to me. But you are doing it to them. You're judging them. Maybe inside. Maybe on the inside. Not yeah. Maybe. Are you yes or no? Depends. Depends on the person. Are you judging them on the inside? Yes. So then you're no better. That's why you're yeah, leaving. But I'm, not, but I'm not. I'm not like openly trying to hurt them with the things I say or the things or the things I do. But you are they hurting them by judging them. How are you a perfect example of a son of God who's judging? God does not judge. Well, what do you mean by judge? Just what you're doing. You think you're better than the non-Christians at work. Maybe I do. Maybe I'm arrogant. What do I do in that case? If, I, if I've become arrogant, what do I do? You need to go and overcome your mother. You have not been born again of God yet. You know about him. You went down to the front of the church and accepted him as Lord and Savior. You know the scriptures, but you have not been born again of the Spirit. You have no love. Well, I did have love. When did you I have love? Had, when did you I have did love? Have I, I had love a few years ago, and I knew love, but all this stuff has happened to me, and I've been pretty upset about it for a long time now. Well, you never had love, because when the world come against you, love is your power, it's your insight, it's your everything. So you never had love. You had mama's love, but you never had God's love. You should go and forgive your mother for turning you away from your father and taking on her identity and then forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother and you shall be born again of the spirit of God. You've been born of your mother, but not of God. Well, just some advice. What do you think I should do about my work situation? I wouldn't worry about that. Are you live? Who you, you live on your own? 
No, I have to live with my mom and my dad because I, I rest I my can't case. Get a job. Right now, I can't even get a job though. Right, you will. If you do what I tell you, you will get a job more than what you need. But you got to go and forgive your mother for turning you away from your father. So that when you are in the world, out there at work and other places, you will be able to see how to deal with people, places, and things in the right way. And in the meantime, you can go over to McDonald's or Starbucks or somewhere and get a job until you get all this other stuff taken care of. There's no such thing as you can't get a job. It's just that you have the wrong mindset. Yes, sir. You got to go and forgive your mother so you can overcome her. I understand. What do you understand about that? I do need to forgive my mom. For what? It's true. Just because she tries to be controlling, but I got to get away. I got to move out so that I can forgive her. So I can stop getting upset with her. No, you move, you go forgive her, and then you see your way out. God will guide you. He will help, He will allow you to get a job, open up ways to get a job, eventually have your apartment. Don't go ahead of that. First thing first, one step at a time. Be honest with your mother. If she doesn't like it, don't hate her. Forgive her. She can't help her. And don't apologize for the way you've been. Just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. You're controlling, and I can't stand you. I realize now you can't help yourself. And then forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. He is married to his mother. Your mother is his mother. And then you would deal with life in a perfect way. And uh, you won't judge the non-Christians. But you got to deal with your mother, Jay, if you want to be free. Because you're going to repeat the same things over and over again. You have your mother's mindset. You need a renewed mind. What would happen if you went and forgave your mother? Would she put you out? No. I mean, I, I, I have forgiven her before. Did you tell her? Yes, sir. Uh, I, once I heard you talking about it, then I told her that. I don't, but then I don't know how genuine it was to be honest with you. Yeah, I do love my mom. No, you I, don't. I about it. You don't love your mother. If you love your mother, you stand up and be a man with her. Your mother is your God. All women are your God. So you have mama's love. You don't have daddy's love. Mister Jess, you have a question. What does it mean to be in the wilderness? Um, the people who have been turned away from their fathers. Okay. You love your then, father? Yes, sir. Well, have you, have you forgiven him for not protecting you from your mother? Yeah, for now. Yeah. But like, like I said, I live with them. So it's kind of, sometimes they get on my nerves. Well, the no. only reason to get on your nerve because you have the mindset of a woman. Men don't have nerve to get on. You're just like your mother, man. And did you go to your father and forgive him for not protecting you from her? No, not really. Then you have not forgiven. You need to be honest, Jay. Well, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't hold animosity against my dad. Then you should let him know that. Ask him why did he protect you from your mother? Okay. And and go go and forgive. Let your mother scream and yell. Don't let her control you anymore. You tell her how the cow ate the cabbage, but don't get angry. Once you forgive her, you won't be able to get angry at her anyway. And then take your time, find yourself a job, and move out. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thanks. Are you doing no. my silent prayer dot video? Uh, I checked it out. So I, you, I, suffer, you're not doing it, huh? Well, I mean, so basically we're just trying to detach ourselves from our thoughts, right? No, we are not trying to do it. 
God will bring you out of the darkness of your imagination. You don't want to detach. You want to observe. You want to see that you will see that you're not your thoughts. They're not from God. They're not from you. They're from your daddy, Satan. All thoughts? All thoughts. Every one of them. Really? Not one thought is from God. Or you. For my entire life? All your life. But now if you go and forgive then he would take all that away from you and he would guide you with the voiceless voice. It would be a revelation. He would guide you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give the silent prayer another chance and, and, and I'll sit down and talk to my mom and my dad. And don't be a softy with your mother. You're going to shake in your boot. Let her know why you resent her. I resent you because you're so controlling. You get on my nerve. I become just like you. And ask your father, Dad, why didn't you protect me from her? And if she starts yelling, just look at her like you, as though you're looking at a movie. Uh, pull up a chair, get some popcorn. If she start crying, watch the movie. If she start whatever, just watch her act out. She might not want to admit that she's wrong. And she's going to blame your father. She'll blame you. She'll blame everybody. And she'll say, oh, I forgive you too. You just said, no, you don't forgive me. I haven't done anything because you cr recreated me in your image. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm just. Can thinking. you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm in California, dreaming of the way it used to be. Jay, you got it's time to overcome the fallen state. All right. Yes, sir. And that way, you won't be one of those Bible thumping Christians out there judging everybody. I don't know if I was a Bible thumping Christian, to be honest. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't. I really don't do that. Oh, I hope you don't. But go and forgive, so God can forgive you and bring you back into the kingdom. Within. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jesse. Let me know how it goes, but but do the silent prayer. Yes, sir. And and don't take everything so seriously. Nothing is that important. I hope you're right about that one. There's nothing that important, Jay. That it could, it should get you upset. Nothing or nobody. Did you tell me you're 30 or 31? 30. It's time to grow up, buddy. Go and forgive your mother. You shall be born again of God. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Call me again. Let me know how it goes. Yes, sir. All right. I wish you well, Jay. God bless you. All right. You too, buddy. Amazing. You got to do the silent prayer so you can see. And all those who are seeking shall see. If you're truly seeking. If you're playing a game, it's a game. I got to take another break. I'm going to move more callers when I come back. I can't believe this hour is gone just like that. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.